Hello and welcome to another edition of Todd Talk, where we take teaching theory and turn it into teaching practice. The topic for today's Todd Talk is going to be Bloom's taxonomy. Benjamin Bloom, back in 1953, created a taxonomy, which was a level of questioning or level of thinking. Um, and he called it Bloom's taxonomy. And I know what you're thinking that it's it's 2019. Um, we're seven, almost 70 years beyond that. Um, why should we be learning about something that is 70 years old? Uh, we should be learning about something that's innovative and technological and, you know, is going to, you know, be groundbreaking. But the fact of the matter that Bloom's taxonomy is, is a wonderful base for you to create your, to send your classroom at in the questioning that you do in your classroom, whether it be written questioning, uh, spoken questioning, or, um, you know, any sort of question that you're going to do. It should be the basis for that. So just to introduce a, bro, a quick, quick overview of Bloom's taxonomy, the various levels at the bottom you can see is remembering, and that just means to recall something that you were told. Understanding is a comprehension, so you can read something and then you understand what it is it's telling you, but it's directly telling you that. Applying means taking what you have learned and applying to something, but um, again, you're not creating necessarily something new. You are just showing that you understand how to use it. When you analyze, you're drawing connections. Um, and so you're, you're reading something and you're reading between the lines and you're making connections that maybe weren't uh, implicit or weren't obviously there. And then you have evaluation, which is stating your opinion. And it's not just stating your opinion, though. You have to be able to back up your opinion with evidence and to be able to make a case for your opinion. And then the last is creation or create, where you produce new or original work. And so um, these are the various levels of Bloom's taxonomy. So why are Bloom's taxonomy so important? Uh, the reason why is because if you start at the bottom and move your way up, each level increases in the, the higher order skills, as you can see on this chart right here. So what that means is when you are remembering, you are not accessing much of your brain other than someone told you something and you, you have memorized it and you're going to recall that. So there's not much thinking going on there. As you move up each level, though, there is more and more thinking going on. So remembering, understanding, and applying are the low-level thinking questions, um, which is that it's not asking you, a student, to do that much thinking. They're just asking you to take what they're being told and put it into play. Analyzing, evaluating, and creating, on the other hand, are the higher order thinking. So this is where you're asking students to critically think, to problem solve, to create solutions of their own rather than just give you a rote answer that is the only answer that's possible. And so the reason why I really love to use Blooms in my classroom is because I like to get kids to this high, these higher order skills. And I do that in a variety of ways. Uh, but by doing this, I feel like I am really challenging them and getting them to use their brain, getting them to think for themselves. Um, and I'm not just handing them information as I would be if I were only using those lower level skills. So Bloom's taxonomy can be applied also to the products that you create in your class. So if you're someone who uses a lot of performance-based learning, uh, you can see that there are various um, products that can be created. So for instance, if you're applying, you could have someone take a photograph or, or do a puzzle or a cartoon or a film strip. So, but you're asking them to construct, solve, and sketch or produce. So, but that is not a lower level of thinking. When you go, um, down to the bottom part of this chart, what you can see is that the higher level skills like analysis are gonna ask you to do something like a graph, uh, a questionnaire, a report, breaking down an argument. If you're doing the evaluation, you may be doing an editorial, a self-evaluation, a group discussion. Um, and the synthesis, which is the old version of create, um, means that you are gonna create something, like you are gonna, you're gonna create a poem, or you're going to create an experiment. Um, you will see some of these, these uh, products repeat themselves, but keep in mind it's the level that you're using it. So in other words, an application, if you are doing a, um, you know, you are creating a cartoon, you're just basically taking a piece of information and just conveying that 
as on as as um, obviously as possible. But when you're doing it in the creation part, you're going to create something brand new. So you you're not going to have anything to go on. You're going to have to think a lot more. So uh, that's Bloom's taxonomy uh, when it comes to products. And so uh, I always like to use these when I'm coming up with products for my projects or my authentic learning. I'd like to, to go to the higher levels of Bloom's in order to do that. In addition to that, you know, we are in the, in the 21st century. We've been in there for quite a while actually now. And so what you see here is uh, Bloom's digital taxonomy activities. So these are things that you can do with using technology that would allow you to use Bloom. So for instance, if you look under the understanding, uh, you're seeing that you're explaining something or outlining something, you could do that in a Google Doc or whatever. Um, if you're applying something, you might be interviewing someone. You're not creating any content yourself. You're just interviewing somebody and getting the information they're giving you. Um, or it could be that you're acting something out. When it comes to analyzing, however, this is going to be a little, see, this is you're going to be planning. So you're going to be surveying or you might be, you know, linking things together or making those connections. If you're creating something that you might be creating a blog or you might be making a film of your own. Um, and so what you see with this Bloom's Digital Taxonomy is just the, the, taking the 1953 and putting in the 2020s. Uh, where you're taking these these ideas of levels of thinking and you're putting it and using modern technology in order to, to make them come to life. The um, when I'm using questioning, so the question becomes when do you use this high, this high, these levels of thinking? And so my answer is that you use it in everything that you do in the classroom. Um, it can be from the uh, test the assessments that you create and what I would often do is I would often um, use this grid right here to go through my assessments to make sure I had a good mix of knowledge comprehensive application analysis create and evaluation because uh, one thing to be be cognizant of is that you don't just do higher level questions or you don't just do lower level questions you do a mix of them uh, because if you just do lower level questioning kids are not taking it to that next level if you just do higher level questioning kids don't are not getting the building blocks that they need which are in those lower levels so you want to have a mix of those so i would take a graph such as this and i would look at and analyze my assessments and see where i was missing questions and then add questions accordingly so that's one way you can do it it can be in the questions that you ask in class so what you see here are what are called question stems so for instance under the um remembering a question stem would be can you recall whatever it is that you're asking them to recall or how could you explain you're asking them to explain something they just saw or just read so they're just saying remembering it um, if you were doing an analyzing you would say why do you think so you're in the why's you know there's a lot more what's where's and you know things like that on the lower level on the higher level there's more why's and how's so how would you categorize something so where would, how would you take that and break that down so I like to use these stems uh, in the classroom when I'm, when I'm having discussion or when I'm writing tests or when I'm having conversations with students. When I first started out using Blooms in the classroom, just like anything, you have to get used to doing it. And what I would do often was I would use something like what you see right here, which is a Blooms flip chart. And I would flip to the different level and then I would be able, and it would give me verbs that I could use in my questioning or stems that I could use in my questioning. And so when I led a discussion with students, I would you flip, flip through this and to create my questions that I was going to ask. And then after a while, you just get used to doing it and you get better at it. And so then I, I don't need the chart anymore. I can come up with higher level questions on my own. But I had to become more aware of the different levels and understanding the different levels. And so why should you use Bloom's Taxonomy in the classroom? It is the cheapest way to challenge students. And what I mean by that is it doesn't take any, any um, you know, bu buying of materials or you know, modules or any, any type of technology or anything like that. You can simply use Bloom's Taxonomy in your classroom um, just by using it, uh, just by creating the questions yourself. Uh, and having your students create the questions as well. So that's another, that's taking it to the next level is to get students in the habit of, of, of recognizing the higher level questions and asking them of themselves uh, and of each other. 
And so if you use this in the classroom to uh, try to get kids to that higher level of thinking, you are going to have a classroom of creative thinkers, innovators, and problem solvers.